Hey, we're live, we're up and running. It is Alter Ego Comics TV for the week of August 29th? I think yesterday was 29th, 2018. Uh, it's been a little while, so I just want to say I'm back. We're back. I'm back. And you may notice uh, it's me and not we. And I do want to lead, lead off this week's episode with uh, letting everybody know that uh, Josh is no longer at Alter Ego Comics. So my partner in crime, my co-host for the last, ooh, he worked here for 11 years, but co-host for probably nine of those 11. Uh, mutual parting of the ways, I wish Josh the best, and I'm sure that he's going to excel in his next position and uh, have benefits, which he doesn't have here, <laughs> so or which he didn't have here. So, um, yes. Just want to get that out there so that everybody is aware. I haven't decided how the format of the show is going to change because we're going from a uh, single host to a, or I'm sorry, from, from two hosts to one host. I have to see if this is actually working. There we are. Okay, it is working. How the so, format of the show is going to change. Whoa, and now you get to hear yourself twice, or I get to hear myself twice. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, wish Josh the best. I'm sure he still has a pull list here. I'm going to see him. Uh, he's still my friend. So he will be around, and maybe we can rope him into uh, co-hosting an episode somewhere down the road. But let's get to this week's best comics. And as the title of the video would suggest, my pick of the week is Hunt for Wolverine Dead Ends. This is by Charles Soule and uh, somebody, Rosanis. Come on, there we go. Ramon Rosanis. So this is a one-shot that is the culmination of the four Hunt for Wolverine miniseries, uh, which are leading towards the return of Wolverine. So Marvel, yes, we know that you like to, to milk us for as much as you can get. And I, I wouldn't, it, it, it would be an issue if the story wasn't good, but this is a really good story. The thing that I like the most about this, now Wolverine, you know, we know that he's out there in the Marvel Universe. We've seen him in... Uh, Infinity Wars, we've seen him pop up in the director's bonus material of several comics. That was like a year ago. Uh, and so we know he's out there, but we don't know exactly what's going on. And we get some clues in this Hunt for Wolverine one-shot dead ends. There were four separate teams uh, kind of searching the globe and following clues to try and figure out where Wolverine is and how, you know, is he back from the dead? Who stole his body? All that fun stuff. Um... And the best part about this issue is the interactions between the different characters. So you've got Tony Stark, Storm, Kitty Pride, uh, Daredevil. Those are the big ones that are here, as well as several other characters. Uh, we get to see a little bit of the, the recently returned to her British appearance, Betsy Braddock, a.k.a. Psylocke. So Psylocke is no longer uh, the uh, Asian ninja assassin. She's now back to the way she was. Wow, like in 1989, perhaps, or 1988, uh, the British prim and proper Betsy Braddock. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I know that happened over in Tom Taylor's uh, miniseries, whichever one that was, whichever Hunt for Wolverine miniseries that was. But reading this really, to me as a kid that grew up reading, in the, reading the X-Men in the 80s, this feels like that. Um, and also where the Marvel characters all kind of sort of know each other. And so you've got multiple characters that have a connection to Wolverine in the same room talking about what they discovered on their little missions and where to go next. So Hunt for Wolverine Dead Ends is my pick of the week. I really enjoyed it. A close second was Extermination number 2. This is by Ed Brisson and Pepe Larraz. This is a miniseries that is supposedly going to wipe the slate clean as far as duplicate mutants. And by that, I mean the young X-Men that were pulled into the future by Beast many years ago. Uh, we've got old version, you know, old man Logan, and then we're going to have regular Logan back at some point. So Ed Brisson has said that he's going to basically do away with all of these other mutants that are not the core original Marvel Universe mutants. So we shall see. Uh, a lot is going on in the second issue. The first issue was excellent and sold out the week it came out. I think it caught a lot of people by surprise, myself included. And the artwork by Loraz is excellent. The writing by Ed Brisson is top-notch. 
and it's just a great story. It's a it's a murder mystery. It's got time travel. It's got Ahab, the future mutant hunting pirate, uh, among other things, and a giant cast of mutant characters. So if you're an X-Men fan at all or a fan of mutants in the Marvel Universe, you're going to want to check out Extermination. Issue number two is out this week, and it is just as good as issue number one. Highly recommend it. I'll take a quick second and say hi to Ed. Uh, thank you for hearing me. Yes, I will reiterate, Josh has left the building. Uh, you know, he went on that Black Badge mission a couple weeks ago and just never came back. We don't know what happened to him. Uh, actually, he is pursuing some other interests, and I get it. 11 years in retail is a long time uh, to stay in retail in one place, especially in a comic shop. And as I mentioned, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, no one is going to get rich working in a comic shop. Not that that's his goal and... Uh, you know, I don't offer benefits to my staff because I can't afford to do it. And so I get it. And I, I, I wish him the best. Uh, he's still my friend. He's still going to be around, but uh, no longer employed at Alter Ego Comics. So we're down to three, Amanda, Alex, and me. And we are pulling some, some overtime to fill Josh's big shoes. And we'll get to that actually further down the road here as I bring up a comic that I didn't read, but Josh would have read. So I want to give you a heads up on that. Uh, and we'll be bringing back some former Alter Ego staffers to pinch hit, and who knows how long they'll be here either. They're helping out on the weekends. Uh, Jared is back, and uh, Adrian is back as well to help out on weekends, and you'll see me on the occasional Saturday. So, back to this week's best comics. From Aftershock, we get a new series by Paul Jenkins, who actually wrote Wolverine Origin, back in the day, so we'll stay with the Wolverine theme. This series is called Beyonders, and no, it's not about the Beyonder uh, from Secret War or Secret Wars. This is about a uh, teenager who is big into mysteries and uh, kind of like uh, Nick Cage's character in National Treasure. You know, he sees the the hidden ciphers and, and clues that are everywhere, and lives with his aunt and uncle, doesn't really fit in. He lives in Alaska, doesn't fit in in school, doesn't really fit in with his family. And it turns out that there is something to all of these mysteries that he's been investigating. He's actually stumbled onto something and looks to be part of something bigger. He's got a dog with an eye patch who is a corgi. If you're a, a corgi fan, uh, you might want to check that out. So I really enjoyed it. Incredibly solid first issue, jam-packed with goodness. And Paul Jenkins says actually... Uh, is running a contest. He's hidden different images and uh, clues throughout the comic, and there's a big Beyonders contest going on. So I think if if that's your jam, then you'll like it. If you did, what's that thing, geocaching? You know, if you went geocaching or you hide those uh, little rocks for people, this may be the book for you. But Aftershock puts out quality stuff. Beyonders is no exception and really enjoyed the first issue. I want to give a shout-out to Cody how is it going in the comic world? The comic world is fun and awesome as always. We're going through this week's best comics, the comics that I think are awesome. And um, yeah, and he, Cody wants to know if there's any news on the Shadow and what about the Jeepers Creepers comic? Well, uh, Shadow, I think, is on hiatus. I don't think we have any Shadow stuff going on. There will be a hardcover collection of The Death of Margot Lane that's coming out uh, before the holidays. So if you're a Shadow fan or you know a Shadow fan, you might want to pick that up. Um, also, Jeepers Creepers, I believe, is still being published, but doesn't sell much of anything here. Uh, the, the Dynamite Horror books just don't sell very well here, unfortunately. Uh, Pumpkinhead and Jeepers Creepers and that sort of thing. We do have a couple customers that are picking it up, and we'll stock the trades, uh, but not going over like gangbusters. All right, my next book to talk about this week is Web of Venom, Venom. All right, so what this is, I guess I should hold it up. I haven't been holding up covers. See, Josh isn't here to remind me to hold up covers. So this is Web of Venom, Venom. This is a one-shot, but it's the first in a series of Web of Venom one-shots written by Donnie Cates, the writer of the current Venom series. And this explores the Venom symbiote and how S.H.I.E.L.D. was involved, specifically Nick Fury, with the symbiote during the Vietnam War. It ties in with the main character, or one of the main characters from the current Venom series. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Rex Strickland, um, who uh, 
kind of meets up with Eddie Brock in the current Venom series. So we get to see Strickland's experience in Vietnam and how he's connected to the symbiote. Nick Fury is there. Wolverine is there. And this book is awesome. This is very much like a uh, Wolverine and Nick Fury fight the Predator in Vietnam, uh, with the Predator being the Venom symbiote. So if that is your jam, and it should be, you totally want to pick this up. Again, it's a one-shot written by Donny Cates. Um, artwork by, sorry, sorry folks for the pause, uh, Juanan Ramirez. So it's, it's super cool. You have two Venom books to choose from this week. From what I hear, they're both very good. I didn't read the other one. It's called Venom, the First Host by Christos Gage and um, Mark Bagley. And Mark Bagley draws a mean Venom. So uh, Web of Venom, Venom is the one that I went with and the one that hopefully you will go with. Cody has a great suggestion here. Let's see what he says, uh, that we should have some stands in the front so we can put each comic up. Yeah, that's a good idea. And Ed also thinks it's a great idea. So we're all in agreement. I will try to remember to put stands up next time I do one of these things. All right, so let's keep rolling along. This next one is the one that I think Josh would have picked as his pick of the week if Josh were still here. And if you're still, if you're just tuning in, that's right, Josh is no longer here. Uh, it was a mutual parting of the ways. Uh, yes, we'll name the stand Josh, Ed. That is an excellent idea. Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons is out this week, and since D and D is Josh's jam, and I think Rick and Morty is his jam too, I know he would have picked this book. This is by one of our favorite writers, uh, Jim Zub, and one of Josh's favorite novelists, Patrick Rothfuss, um, taking the Rick and Morty universe and smashing it into the D and D universe. That's all I know about it, folks. Really, I didn't read it. I don't play D and D. Maybe I'll read it. I heard, I've heard excellent things about it. And again, I like both of those, those writers. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll read it right now and you can just watch as I read this for the next 10 minutes. No, not a good plan? Okay, so pick it up. I believe it is a five issue mini series. First issue is out. Perfect for D&D &D fans, perfect for Rick and Morty fans, perfect for Family Guy fans. If you like humor, uh, if you like D&D, &D, you're gonna love this. Rick and Morty, D&D, &D, published by IDW and Oni Press. It's a good crossover going there. And that's the big crossover of the week. Let's talk about trade paperbacks for just a minute. Uh, you may recall that I spoke very highly of a series called Judas from Boom Studios written by Jeff Loveness when it came out several, many months ago. This was a four-issue miniseries uh, focusing on uh, the biblical apostle Judas and basically what happens to him um, after he betrays Christ. And it is beautifully drawn. It is beautifully written. Uh, it's, it's an excellent read, and I highly recommend it. If you didn't check out the single issues, now is the time to pick up the graphic novel. You don't see a lot of, of biblical, biblical, biblically related comics, um, despite the huge number of people in this world that uh, believe in the Bible and maybe have a Bible in their home. So this is definitely one to pick up, regardless of your, of your faith beliefs. It's a really solid story. It's got horror elements in it, uh, and it's just super, super cool. So I'll be bringing my copy home and probably reading or rereading it again this weekend. Cody has another comment here. He hopes that Dynamite goes and reprints the old Pulp Magazine Shadow Comics. Uh, I don't know if that will happen, Cody. Uh, I don't know where the rights are with those things and how much has survived and all that fun stuff. Uh, sounds like you're a big fan of the Pulp Heroes. And uh, sadly, that puts you in the minority of comic book readers. Uh, as much as I love those characters too, they just never really seem to take off or click with a wider audience. And there's nothing wrong with that, and that's the beauty of comics, in the, is that you know it appeals to, to, to everybody. Comics are for everyone. And even though there may be a very small percentage of comic readers that follow the Pulp Heroes, it's clearly still enough for Dynamite to continue publishing characters like uh, Deja Thoris and Flash Gordon and The Shadow and, of course, um, everybody else. Actually, Dick Tracy is coming back, and that's from IDW. I believe that starts shipping in the next couple of weeks. So there are fans out there. There are people that appreciate it. And if you are a fan like that, you definitely need to uh, spread the word among your fellow pulp fans that these exist, that they go out to their local comic shops and support the pulp heroes if they want to see more. So... 
here endeth the <laughs> the lecture on Pulp Heroes. Um, yeah, Masks was a great series, Cody. I was just talking about that yesterday with uh, people in the store. We were talking about Alex Ross's artwork, and the last thing I can remember him doing interiors on was Masks, number one. So the Shadow does know, Ed, he knows everything. So that does it for this week. A uh, little late. We're going to try and get back to Wednesdays. Uh, with the Comics Are Awesome broadcast here. But as I said, uh, since Josh has left, uh, we're kind of doing some additional, having some additional responsibilities here, which makes it a little more difficult for me to do this on Wednesday. Uh, and yeah, uh, basically open to your suggestions on what you'd like to see in a weekly video from myself, from the team, uh, talking about comics, talking about whatever. But for now, we'll stick with Comics That Are Awesome. And I'll be back next week, sometime, hopefully Wednesday, to share my picks with you. Thanks for watching, and if you like this week's episode, please give it thumbs up and share it and comment and all that fun stuff. And I appreciate you for watching. See you again next week.